In Love is presented by Smile Direct Club, who makes it easier than ever to straighten your smile without brackets, wires, and monthly office visits. For $100 off your aligners, just go to smiledirectclub.com slash podcast and use the offer code In Love. Welcome to In Love with Michael Rosenbaum and Chris Sullivan, where we explore the universal language of love, walk through the struggles of love lost, and together navigate the bumpy and gratifying road to happiness. Loving me, loving myself, working on my state of mental health, and I never thought it would go this far. Said we'd just be friends, but I'm standing here full of emptiness. I confess, I'm a beautiful mess. Oh, it's a good day for podcasting. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling energetic. Your today. voice is is deeper, I think, because uh, you just raged it, dude. <laughs> you ra- listen. This was a Chris Sullivan weekend. I went to see you in your band. I always fuck the name up because it's such a cool name. Joseph the spouse. Joseph the spouse. Yeah. And listen, man, you supported the shit out of me this week. And then we did a table read for your new project yeah. uh, for this. And you know, I love horror. Yeah. So uh, that was awesome. But let me just say something about the band. I, I you know. I'm not amazed by it because I know how talented you are, not to blow smoke up your nice plump it butt cheeks. It feels nice. No, you're inside of me yet again. Yes. There were a couple of songs that I was like, oh my God, this needs to be on the radio. It, it was that kind of thing. Oh, thanks, And man. you were fearless. I remember your focus was like, you know, I asked you beforehand because I always am so like, I'm obsessed with this. Do you get nervous? Are you upset? Do you get anxiety? Do you get like, because I'm always talking about that. And you're like, yeah. yeah, I get nervous. In fact, I need to go take 15 minutes for myself right now is what you said. Yeah. But I notice when you're on stage and these songs aren't easy to play and you're playing with musicians that are just far superior than any yeah. musician I've ever played with. Me too. And me that too. would just scare me. And it, you just, you owned it, dude. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, the the, the project has been incredible. And I've had the, the support of a, of a producer and a writing partner in Taylor Goldsmith, who is uh, the lead singer of a band called Dawes. And when I told him I wanted to do this, he's all in. He jumped right in. He called his bandmates. So we had three members of the band Dawes on stage. And then we had Bo Coster on keys, who plays oh. keys for My Morning Jacket and for Roger Waters. He's, Fuck he, he's, off, he's, really? He's, I didn't know that. He's the keyboard player for uh, Pink Floyd, which is scary, which is even scarier. Like to, to I want to surround myself with people who are better at the thing I'm attempting than myself. Well, then you need to get out off um, this show, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you need to quit hosting with me, man, because you're in the wrong place. <laughs> and so the fear sets in, but uh, I feel very comfortable on stage, and I'm very grateful um, for for everyone who came out. And uh, we'll play more shows. And, yeah, and thank you for coming dude, out. Dude, I'm, I'm honestly grateful. You know, we always talk about what, what we're grateful for. And uh, you folks, uh, you know, think about, take a minute to think about what you're grateful for. It's kind of a nice thing to just sit there and say, you know, I, we're so obsessed with shit, right? We're like, oh my. I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. Yeah, take a break. Take a take a seat. Just take think about it. what am I grateful for? I'm grateful for uh, the opportunity to listen to great music mm-hmm. and and my friend who's so talented and uh, share it with you. And not only Rachel and her amazing voice, your yeah. wife yeah. who got out there and sang with you. And that was a great night. And then you know you asked me to do the table reading, and I was like, fuck table reading. It means it's you know it's mm-hmm. I don't necessarily have the part. Uh, I, no, it was great. It was four hours, but uh, it was too long. It was long, but you know what? It and was, by the it was way, really good. Well, announce it right. You have the part if you want it. Is that true? That is true. I like that part of it. That is true. I thought you were really great, and so did everyone else. Wow, you hear yeah. that, guys? Right here on the offer podcast. for a movie role. Uh, by the way, if you like the show, you know, make sure you you head over to the Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's all at In Love Podcast, and all three of those. Uh, the hotline number. You know it. It's 323-207-5676. And you can call us at any time. Call us with questions about love, about life, about sex, about relationships. Um, We want to know what turns you on. We want to know what you're in love with. Um, And we'll send out little notices when we're having guests on so you can ask specific questions to them. But you can call that number any time time yeah and feel free always say rosie sully always intro like that we're kind of we want to get used to that i like the rosie sully feel but also you know feel free to talk about it's not look as much as we love to talk about love and life and health and the up things you know things that bring you up you know if there are things that bring you down that maybe we've experienced that we could share with you to make you go hey you know they've experienced i think you know that for me when i see other people 
that have similarities or have dealt with anxiety or dealt with certain things in life and they talk about their it helps the shit out of me. That's right. And that's why I like doing this and my podcast inside you because I think it helps people. Yeah, we can do it together. You know, all of these things that are painful to go through. Um, the point is you have to go through them. You can't go around them. You can't ignore them. Um, you can't just let it go. Sometimes you have to experience it and maybe we can, uh, maybe we can help each other do that. I have a feeling I'm going to cry in front of you sometime. Yeah, probably. I mean, I'll do the same. Yeah, because I, I, I will. Yeah, I, I could get emotional every once in a while. But you feel like the kind of person that I could cry in front of. Tyler, I feel like, I don't know. Like, if I cry with you, you might smile like you just did. But I think, you know, you, you might hug me after a minute. You might give me a hug. Yeah, a, hand on, the, a hand on the shoulder. By the way, Tyler's your Hi, Tyler. He's, he's just waving. He's like, I'm not on a mic. I can't do this. By the way, you, like, thanks for bringing this special guest in today. Yeah, speaking of crying, let's talk about This, <laughs> this is, is us. us. My compatriot in... All of my scene, most, most you know, ninety nine percent of my scene work on this is us, Chrissy Metz, who has an extreme access to her emotions. She know she understands them. She knows where they are. She knows how to how to bring them up uh, as part of her art form. Uh, and today, she is bringing in her best friend, Donnie. Right, and they've been best friends for a long time. Long right? time. I'm not sure how long. I have a lot of questions, and I and I resisted asking them ahead of time, so we can ask them on uh, on mic here. But not only are, are they best friends, <laughs> right? Um, they also work together. He also he lived, was on This Is Us an episode. He was he? on This Is Us, but yeah. he is also um, her assistant, and they live in the same house together. So it's a very interesting relationship. Um, friendship can be. Uh, and he's a nurse. Tricky. And he's a nurse. He's a nurse. Uh, you know why I know this? Tell me. Because uh, yesterday at about 11 a.m., uh, there was a knock on my door, and I was pretty much naked. I answered the door, and it was Chrissy Metz and Donnie. They were two hours early. For, for Yes, we were supposed to record yesterday at 1 o'clock. Right. And they came at 11 o'clock. And that didn't work out because you were about 50 minutes away. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, they came in. My mother had a conversation with them, which, you know, got my anxiety levels really high. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, but they were really fun, and we sat around and talked for a while, and yeah. then then they left, and they're coming back today, which is nice. But, you know, by the way, uh, I, uh, also what we're grateful for, we always say, I'm not only grateful to you, but I'm also grateful to my assistant, Jess, and my brother, Eric, for getting me through these last three days. My mother was here. I have, mm -hmm. I don't want to say contemptuous. What's the word I'm looking for? It's like, I love my mother. It's weighted. It's, you know what it is? I love her because she's my mother, and that's a Jewish guilt fucking mm -hmm. bullshit that you have to do. And I, I do love her. I do. If something happened to her, I'd feel terrible. But I don't necessarily like the woman. You have and a she, lot of She history. knows it. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm able to say this because she won't listen to this. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to hurt her feelings, but it's yeah. just like it's me being honest. But I just want to think, you know, there were people that kind of helped me through it, and I tried to take deep breaths and go, yeah. hey, yeah. uh, I can get through this. I'm going to make her happy for these three days. I'm going to just support her. Yeah. And I'm going to take her to the, my brother got Dodger tickets. I took her to a nice restaurant. We had fun. We went to the Laurel Canyon oh, country nice. store that she loves. And she just enjoyed it. And you know what? If I can make someone else feel good, and, and I think, you know. So that's, that's all I have to say about that. You navigated it well from what I've heard. I, I did navigate it well. You know, I was driving to your house, and, and on the trip to your house, we, I pass the Houdini mansion. Oh, yeah. And it reminded me of my time in college. I had a friend who, who was equally into the macabre. You are as well. I love into horror. horror films, all of these things, as am I. And every Halloween, we used to take all of our friends, instead of going to some party and getting drunk, we would take on all, our, all our friends on a haunted tour of Los Angeles. We'd go to the Roosevelt Hotel. We'd tell those stories. We would essentially drive around for hours. But Nightmare on Elm Street House. Nightmare on yeah. Elm Street House. And, and we would always end up out in front of the Houdini mansion mm. at midnight, contemplating whether or not to go to walk up what used to be there was a cr like a like a crumbling old stone stairwell that would go up into the woods and up in the, up on top of the hill you could see this old mansion that was falling apart. Ooh. It's since been purchased and re and renovated and all those things. But one of the things that I love about the macabre and about horror. It encourages me to contemplate mortality, death, and all of these things. And as, as a part of my mindfulness practice, as a part of my meditation, uh, death is something that we don't talk about. It's something that's taboo. It's something that's hard to talk about. But my, my contemplation of my own mortality helps me live a fuller life, live in the moment, appreciate what I have, and live in gratitude. So 
my love for horror is kind of a long road to get there, but yeah, I was thinking about that on the way here. That's pretty that's pretty powerful. And it's yeah. pretty it's great that people don't see those two and, and combine them in terms of like, you know, people think horror, oh I don't like that. It's it's death and this and then your your thoughts on it are it kind of embraces you to the idea that it, we all die. Yeah. This is what's gonna happen. I'm not immortal. I would like you to take me on a tour, the old tour of what Sully did back in the day of all the horror places that you went to. Yeah, we could do that. And I will bring you, there's also another one, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, the Betty Davis movie. Right, right, there's right. There's right. house, there's yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street house. There's the location over by USC maybe where the we Black just, Dahlia was found. Ooh, maybe we could do something where we could do a start a celebrity horror tour bus where like you and I drive and people are in the bus, you get tickets and we'll take you and we'll give you our tour. I smell a Halloween oh, episode. Oh, baby! <laughs> okay. Here they are, folks. Chrissy Metz <laughs> and Donnie. Yeah. Donnie what? Barry. Donnie like the fruit. Barry. Like the fruit. Yeah. How long have you guys known each other? 17 years. 17 years. How old were you when you met? How old were you? Donnie was 14, 13? 13. 13. Yeah. Chrissy was 20. Yeah. Donnie was discovered at the paddock. Is it the paddock mall? The paddock like, mall. The paddock yes. mall in Ocala, Florida, singing at last, where our uh, mutual manager mm -hmm. discovered him. Wow. So. Were you there? I was not. Okay. I was at the Holiday Inn. Um, okay. Singing? No, not singing. I was taking my sister. Stay in the night. I was a lounge singer at the Holiday Inn. No, I was, no, at twenty years old. No, I was taking my sister to uh, an open call. Oh, okay. Um, for and, what? For see, well, she wanted to be a print model. Mm -hmm. We have different dads. She's tall and thin. So um, it was like one of all, one of those like talent searches, and she went right, on a tour an open of call. North Central Florida. Yes, sure. And so. She was from Denellen, which is a little farther south than Ocala. But Donnie lived in and is from Ocala, by the way, of Tennessee. Anyway, I'm supposed to be having my 20 year class reunion, folks. Oh, this is a funny story, by the way. Sidebar. So I wanted to go to my 10 year reunion in a helicopter because I just knew I was going to be famous and rich. Uh huh. <laughs> and did you really? Mm hmm. You always knew it since no, you were a kid. No, I didn't think I was going to be rich. rich. But I thought I'd be famous enough to have a helicopter. Okay. Huh. Not just to arrive in one, but to Think own one. Think about that, folks. <laughs> it's not logical. Right. However, Sterling said to me, well, Chrissy, now you have to go. You're 20 or 3 and you have to show up in a helicopter. I'm like, no, now that I can, I'll look like an asshole. Yeah. I can't do it. If you can, you shouldn't. Correct. Wait a minute, but it's her dream. <laughs> it's not really but my dream. It, it, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny if, if you can't. And all of a sudden, you do. <laughs> That's, That's a true. funny joke. That's uh, true. I'm sorry, but I just had to do it. Be a douchebag. Hey, by the way, can I just hear any at last? Can you give me one? Oh, no. You, you don't want me to do can that you hear, one now, can you do sing, you? Can you sing a something? Just a bar of something. Anything. It could be just a... My love has come along. My lonely days are over. Yes. And life is like a song. Come on, Daddy. Come on. on. Dude. Fake a team Why do you think he's all over my Instagram? Because I'm trying to make him famous so he can take a helicopter to his reunion. <laughs> See, if you took Donnie's helicopter to your reunion. That would be something. That would be a thing. So you guys are not only best friends, 17 years. Yeah. But you work together. Yes. And you Bless live him. together? Yes. I said, Donnie... You're let's like, be let's, inseparable. Yeah, let's try our best to destroy this friendship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of dynamics there. A lot of interweaving. Uh, it's hard. Things. It's a tricky situation. It's very tricky. But you guys seem to navigate yeah, how did, it Let me well. ask you, because you, you've been married, right? Correct. And Thanks you were, for the research. And divorced. Correct. <laughs> and so I take it you've only been living together for about four years. Well, interestingly enough, while I was married, Donnie was back in Florida taking care of his mother. Oh. He's also a nurse fluent in sign language. Um, he's a Zumba instructor. He's lost 100 pounds twice. Like This is my agent. Right? This boy is incredible. <laughs> so we didn't know each other while I was... Oh, well, not we, were, we weren't estranged, but you weren't a prominent part of my life or I and yours while I was married. I've had best friends like that. Yeah. That you, you have seasons yeah. where, where you're around more. Right. Yeah. So that's sort of what happened. Um, so you didn't know my ex-husband. No, actually. You never, never met. I never met him. Mm -mm. Wow. I bet you heard a lot, though, in the time you've lived together. Not 
really. No. I, what I've heard from him has been nothing but really good things. She always says he's an angel. He is. And... Is this true? He, he is. So you guys are still friends? We're friendly. I mean, he, I think, is in a new relationship, and he's very respectful. I think that, so he's sort of, we're not, I mean, we talk, we like text, but we don't. Okay, okay, hang on, hang on. This is rare. <laughs> this is hard for me to understand because. But it's not, though. You're friends with your exes. I know, I know. That's what I was going to say. Most people get divorced. Now, I don't know who left who. Was it, it was mutual. Okay, if it was mutual, maybe that's different. But, you know, it's got to be hard when you... Because you were married for a while. Uh, five and a half years. Uh, that's a long time, especially yeah. in Los Angeles. Oh. Um, <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Facts. No. Facts. <laughs> but, you know, people sometimes look at me and go, how are you friends with your exes? I don't get it. In fact, one of my exes was on the show. Mm. She came and she's married and I'm friends with her and I love her baby and... We talked about things and like why it didn't work and why, and it was interesting to hear that perspective. Is it is it hard for you to sort of divulge like why things didn't work? No, I, I'm probably an oversharer in many <laughs> aspects of my life. But when I started to figure out that there were like issues that obviously had nothing to do with him, that I became sort of a mirror when I was dealing with my issues and his own issues. And then we realized like we love each other as human beings, but we're not very compatible. Like he didn't really want to be around actors. <laughs> Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Did, scoop scoop. Did you not? <laughs> Google, Google, Google. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did yeah. you not know that ahead of time? Well, here's the thing. I was a talent agent at the time, and my life was helping other people create their own dreams. And he was an aspiring writer. And so I worked like stupid 70, 80 hours a week, and he worked part time aspiring screenwriting. So I think then when I was like, you know what, I really want to try. And, and give acting a go. He was like, well, okay, I will support you in anything you want to do. But then when he's around actors, he's like, oh, they're a bit much. He's English. And I'm like, yeah, well, I guess that we are a bit much. <laughs> yeah. He's like, they're always talking on top of each other. And I'm like, oh, they kind of are, you know? And But like, you either are down for the ride or you're like, oh, get me the hell off of here. Right. Yeah. And I understand that. And he's, he's introverted. He's very quiet. And he, I, I'm not a lover of horror movies. Stop. <laughs> In the, so, you know, we were, in, we were just the, talking yeah. about how much we love horror movies. Oh, Donnie, love. Barry as well. I, I don't know. I'm in a new chapter in my life. I get oh, very scared, very oh, well, thank easy. Goodness. Sure. Um, the darkness you know, is, yeah, it's too can much. be scary. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Process and the, your own uh, stuff. The yeah. unknown. And then come back to other people's <laughs> yeah. other people's The darkness, unknown and yeah. the uncertainty of horror. And also like the energy I'm not keen sure. on having in my life. And sure. he loved horror. He loved horror. And um, in a real way. Like... All of the the non well, I I call it nonsense. God forbid. Meanwhile, there's um, Freddy Krueger above me. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. And legitimately, he's a collector. I'm a grown man with but with toys. There's also Indiana Jones. And thank goodness, there's okay, good balance. So so you guys are best friends. You you live together. You work together. You assist her in things. Is this yes. is this correct? This is a relationship. This is yeah. a serious relationship. It's, yes, this is a serious relationship that needs honesty, needs vulnerability, needs boundaries, needs all of these things. So how do you guys how do you guys navigate that? Because I've I've talked about employing a friend. Because yeah. if I'm going to be around somebody all the time, I'd like to know them and for them to know me. But it just seems dangerous. So how do you, what what kind of things do you have in place to kind of navigate that stuff? Well, it is very scary and it is dangerous because you don't want to affect the relationship. I mean, there's nobody in the world that I, when I want to punch him in his face, I still want him around. Mm -hmm. And that's Donnie Berry. Um, so he <laughs> keeps things very real for me. And sometimes I don't like that. Because you can be honest in a way that others can't? Yes. Also because I trust him. And there's like a In real... what way can you be honest with her that others can't? Um, uh oh. Donnie. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I'm learning how to be honest and I'm learning how to like navigate this dynamic, you know, because I would tend to say things as a friend that wouldn't be very beneficial <laughs> as an employee. Why? Sure. Um, Why? Such as. And, you know, such as, what you mean you want me to stay home and do such and such? What are you doing? Why can't you do such and such? Or, um, Chrissy, <laughs> why are there all these cans all over the place? Like, can you pick them up? What it's kind of cans? Zevia. I'm Zivia. obsessed with Zevia. <laughs> but as an employee, this has been a very big learning process for me because I do want to make sure that the boundaries are nice and clear. Um, do you guys have an escape hatch? Do you guys have... We should. Friends of mine who went into business made sure that when they started the business and everyone was happy and excited, that they said, if this happens, anyone can get out of this at any time. And it was like an escape plan so that if tensions got high, people didn't didn't have to worry about that. Have you... <laughs> <laughs> if you at any point this isn't for working moment, for anybody... Or long term. We're, we are... Like, yeah. I'm going to take a five minute. 
I think we need a five minute escape hatch and like a forever <laughs> escape hatch. But like you guys want to preserve the friendship above all else. Yeah. I mean, I, I do. Donnie? Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm no, not that's sure. Donnie's like, I love this job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, I went, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, how to get that check. You know, no. hang on, you don't, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, she said in the beginning, it's very important that like, you know, we're friends above anything else. And I think at least for me, it's just been like trial and error, you know, trying to really remove... Listen, the I have ego, a lot of help because well. I am in <laughs> recovery. Mm -hmm. So between my sponsor and between my therapist. 16 I, months? Uh, 19, actually. 19, 19 congratulations. months from drugs and alcohol Congrats, and a year from disordered eating. Hey. So um, what recovery has taught me is like how to not be so reactive and how to just pause. And also how like that I can't trust my own perception of a lot of things. So typically as a friend in the past, when she does something, I'm like, oh, this bitch right here. You know what it makes me a bitch? <laughs> oh, I don't know for a lot to cut. Internally. About that. Internally. Yeah, right. No, no, no. No, I don't do that these days. I don't do That's that fine. these days. That's fine. But, um, you know, it gives me the opportunity to like take a step back, assess. think out, assess. Sure. And to not allow your, your character defects to control the way you treat yourself or exactly. others. But hang on. Exactly. I want to say something. <laughs> I want to chime in here. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I hired my brother to be my assistant, and he was for five years, and he worked with me. Your relationship changes, at least mine I did. think it's different with family than friends. Well. How so? What before changed? Before that, what? I hired my other assistant. <laughs> what, <laughs> changed? Was, what changed? What um, changed? I just felt like it was sort of beneath him. To listen to his brother, who's you know, it was like um, you know, my brother wants me to go do this. Younger brother, older brother. Younger. He's your younger he's brother. He's my younger brother, and he's he's really smart. I think he's smarter than me, although he doesn't act it like he does like stupid shit. But I love him to death. But I think he's smarter than me, and it was just like beneath him. And I think at this juncture in his life, he was thinking, I shouldn't be doing this. I should be like fucking doing this. And what am I doing? I'm I'm going to get his car worked on and doing this while he's you know and so finally i said look dude i love you you're my brother i don't want to fuck this up if this is an ego thing and you're like you don't want to do shit because oh i'm his assistant now then don't fucking do it don't ruin our brotherhood and i even told him i said hey find a job at the end i was like hey get a job you know i'm paying you until you get a job but it's better i want to save our relationship and it was hard and he's like look dude i'm sorry i'm like no man this is just it's killing me it's killing you it's not right it's not healthy it's fucking us up and you're all i got and I just knew that we had to cut it off to make our, to just keep things together. Yeah. You know? I think, and correct me if you, if you disagree, but I think there's like a mutual benefit from our relationship. You know, mm -hmm. like I really believe in Donnie as a human being, but also as a talent and as an actor and, and all the things that he's really, really amazing at. And so I'm like, okay. So who can I have you meet and who can I have you fall, you know, fall in love You're with you? You're also a former casting director. So uh, agent. That in yeah, agent, so, yeah, agent. yeah. And so I want to help him in any way I can because he helps me in, in, in ways that I don't know how to help myself sometimes. And so like um, what? I really am not great at boundaries. Like? Like I'm going on a vacation with some friends and I'm like, okay, well, I should do this and I should do that. And Donnie's like, you shouldn't do anything. You want to. And you don't have to. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we do it. Uh, nice built in checks and balances. I yes. Think. And I, I think it's been a good fit for me because, like, you know, I've also worked so many years as a nurse and I also did in home nursing. So I kind of had to wear all sorts of hats. I was a babysitter, I was an organizer, I was, you know, fill in the blank. And um, I sort of, I think I have an innate desire to like want to help and manage mm. and, he's and really good at keep it. people organized. Yeah. But that's where I've had to learn my boundaries mm -hmm. because then I want sure. to tell her what to do. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. well, you should do this. And it would be more count and you know having to like detach that like her life is her life and i think the hardest thing right. for me has been like my idea of what she should be doing here may not be what she wants to do and guess what your job is to help facilitate whatever it is she wants to do mm. and um i think another thing i take as my responsibility is like sort of reassuring her that like look i need structure i need a clear outline of what's expected of me i operate best like that yeah. so i want you to feel comfortable enough to say hey look can you take the trash out can you take my car here can like i want that and sometimes she's like oh well i don't want, i don't want you to yeah, have to do this that, i'm like no i need to know like you want me to pick up your dirty drawers girl tell me to pick up the, the dirty drawers like <laughs> i need will. to know you know what i mean and he has and i thank you yeah. how um, dirty yeah. are they <laughs> <laughs> i mean don't, don't no, no 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 <laughs> In Love is presented by Smile Direct Club.
Rosie, I, I was really excited about this because I have been wanting to straighten my teeth. You've been talking about that. For a while. And now I've got my Smile Direct uh, Club partnership, and they're going to hook it up and give us some trays, and we're going to fix the things that we think are wrong with you our teeth. You know what's teeth. great is we don't have to go into dental office visits. You just go to the, we went to the Smile Shop, and we went down there. It took like, what, 20 minutes, and they just got a 3D thing of our teeth, so you don't have to get these crappy molds at a dentist place, and it's always expensive. You just get this thing. They pretty much send it to you. Yeah. So you could... Uh, straighten your grill out folks mm -hmm. and these professionals call them what you will licensed dentist orthodontist that's what i would call they them. are going to call you they'll check in on your progress every 90 days that's right so slowly but surely uh over over the course of however many months uh, uh your teeth will just fall into place they certainly will Get started without leaving the comfort of your home. Find out if you're a candidate by taking the free 30 second smile assessment on their website. And as one of our listeners, you'll get $100 off your aligners. Just go to smiledirectclub.com slash podcast and use the offer code in love. Don't wait any longer to get the smile you deserve. Use this exclusive offer to get $100 off at smiledirectclub.com slash podcast with the code in love. Smiledirectclub.com slash podcast with the code in love. The hard part about uh, our line of work being performers, all four of us, is that our business is us. Yeah, mm. and it's fluid. The, the the business is me. So I I had to incorporate. I can speak for myself. I had to incorporate myself so that the things that I do, the acting or the singing or the voiceover or the whatever, is the business. And so in order to make time like you were saying a lot of these things that seem menial or that seem like something you you wouldn't want to do for someone the business needs to take a nap right you know the business needs to rest yeah <laughs> so that so that they can be up at four in the morning to be in the makeup chair for how yeah. long was it on smallville four hours no, every no, day? For the first couple of years was two two hours two hours every morning. day so there are things that need to be handled because the the business has to retain energies to expend them on camera or to expend them on mm -hmm. tape. And and that's a hard thing because we're all trying, and I know this because I, I know all of you fairly well, and if you're in recovery, then, then I definitely know it about you, but I know this about you too. We're all trying to remove ourselves from our ego mm -hmm. and to be more conscious and mindful and uh, of other people and, and the people around us. And that's hard to do yeah. when we are the business. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an interesting dynamic that you talk about, about like, yeah, can you take my car to get fixed? I but I, I think that's great that, you know, what I like about this dynamic between you two is that you are also trying to help each other. Like yeah. you're just trying to make each other look as good as you can. Yeah. And I think that to have someone's back, it's so hard to find someone, even my assistant now, Jess, it's like, she does take care of me. She was sort of, I hate to say it, like the mother that I never really had. Mm. You know, she kind of looks after me. She's like, you're colorblind. You can't fucking wear that. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Are you really? Yeah, it's fine though. I'm my also... my dad is and my mom used to trick him and put different color socks out. Oh, that's cruel. Because he, But he's a jerk. No, no. Oh, well, he, he deserved that. Yeah, yeah. But don't you think that maybe... BT-dub. Was your, was your mom a good mom? Yeah. I okay, mean, but your dad was not a good dad. Not to me. Right. Yeah, not to me. So you think, do you sometimes think that maybe Donnie in a way is filling that void? Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. My, because Jess is kind of filling that void for yeah. me, that, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I think a big, I also go to trauma therapy. And um, in trauma therapy, I'm learning that like, we have two very different personalities in the sense that like, I need structure. I need like clear black and white, you know, organized this and that. Chrissy is very opposite of that. Because I was she, so over-disciplined right. growing up. Mm. I'm like, if you tell me one more time to sweep the driveway and get every single leaf off the drive, like, it makes me crazy. I'm like, right. or it's like, trust that, like, I know how to do something. But Donnie's like, no, no, no. I like the structure. And I'm like, no, don't tell me what to do. Yeah, and I've, it's yeah. been a process of, like, just learning I don't want to say manager boss, but manager boss in a way. Like, just learn how to be sensitive to like, okay, look, I'm working for someone that doesn't like to be committed to certain things. So, like, 
I'm going to have to learn how to be flexible. And I think that's the biggest thing is like learning how to live in the gray area. I have not lived in the gray area in anything I've done in my life. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's just learning how to be flexible is, is the biggest thing for me. And the willingness, the willingness to show her that like, look, when I'm presenting this idea to you, it's not to be like bossy or whatever. It's just, this is an observation I've made. I think this could help. Take it or don't. But then also not take it personal when she's like, well, I'm not doing that. Be like, well, well I, I have neuroses. I have neuroses. Like we're planning this trip. And I was like, well, if we all go on a plane, what happens? What if something happens to the plane? Like those are the kinds of things I think about. I'm like, Chrissy, let's come back down to planet Earth. And so it sounds crazy. But like then I'm like, oh, I'm him and hawing about making a decision about booking a flight. Most people will be like, oh, get, get, whatever. I'm like, yeah. well, there's this and then there's that and then that could happen. And then Do you also think about what the bad things that could happen, because I'm trying to work on that where, where I uh, instead of thinking, hey, I'm going to have this podcast today and these guests are going to come on. And it's going to be so much fun. And we're going to be sitting there and talking about our lives and what works and how we can be better people. And then I'll go, oh, my God, what if they just hate me? Oh, <laughs> what I, if they just Donnie Berry, go ahead. our lives? Like, I'm trying to change that. Like, I, I'm definitely working on that. And I've seen some improvements. So. You and know, how are you working on it? Well, there's a thing called behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, and cognitive behavioral therapy. So I do that. And, you know, it's like before you go to bed, put three images in your head of people that just make you happy. Mm -hmm. And think about them. Like my grandfather. Think about his face. Think about something he said to you. Think about and go to sleep with some positive energy, some mm -hmm. good feelings. Or yeah. waking up, I had a sign on my door that said, three things you're grateful for every morning. And what's funny is I do it and I notice an improvement and then I fall back into bad it's a habits. Yeah. Because as soon as you start to feel good, you're like, oh, great. I don't need, yeah, don't need to do that that's anymore. That's right. That's right. You, know, you go to the gym, you kind of get strong and you're like, oh, good. I'm strong forever now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at me, my muscles. Yeah. I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. Yeah. 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 Right. And it's, right. A, it's the same thing emotionally. It's the same thing mentally. And, and that's the interesting part about all the different types of relationships we're going to talk about on this podcast, you know, whether it's husband, wife, best friend, employer, employee, like Michael and I hit it off immediately mm. but we don't know each other that well let's develop a friendship and let's do it like live in front of people and the thing that <laughs> <laughs> kind of and and, and, wow. and, and, and we knew we knew that that it would work out because we're both we both want it to right mm. and that goes for any relationship mm. right like like and, and we attract we attract the things that that we probably need to work on right yeah. like anybody who gets married you're like oh well oh surprise surprise i've married my father or surprise surprise i've married my mother and the challenge <laughs> then becomes staying conscious enough to not turn that person into that person whether it's yeah whether it's a father figure or whether it's a you know whatever whatever type of energy but that, that we're all here to teach each other and to challenge each other into into becoming better people and and it sounds like you guys do that, have been doing that for a while. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to think so. I know sometimes it's not always easy to ask for what I glance, need. As a knowing glance, what does that mean? Just because like to ask for what I need sure. and then to remind myself like, okay, no, Donnie is cool with doing it. He's not going to take it personal. Mm -hmm. He wants to do it. He wants to help. He wants to be of service. But what about our big fight in Canada? Oh, mm. Guys, we've never had a fight like this. All, <laughs> the biggest, all the biggest fights. <laughs> what was the fight? And then we're going to go into some questions from people online. Oh, oh, oh. Well, it was in the beginning stages of like, I think it was pre-talks of me being her assistant. So she's okay. like, well, let's, you know, do a trial run and see kind of how it goes. Mm -hmm. And, you oh. know, I was maybe six, seven months sober then. I didn't have the, the coping skills and the communication skills that I have now. But I think that Chrissy said. <laughs> no, what happened? My perception yes. of what happened was. We were invited to go somewhere. And here's the thing. This is this is always the second question. Oh, hey, Chrissy, is Donnie here? Did you bring Donnie? And that is that makes me so happy because to know Donnie is to love Donnie. And that's just the bottom line. And so I'm happy. And so I, I, and not that we become like the duo, but everyone's like, oh, where's Chrissy and Donnie? And so then I feel <laughs> obligated. Somebody invited us out. And they're like, oh, we planned karaoke. And we know love, Donnie loves to sing. And ba -da -da. so he's going to come. I just assumed he wanted to go. I didn't ask. I just was like, okay, Donnie, we're going to go on Tuesday because somebody planned this. And that was my fault. I should have said, hey, are you comfortable with going out to karaoke with some strangers that you might have to entertain? And, um, <laughs> and But per usual, that's what we do anyhow. Anyway, I should have asked. I did not. And then he couldn't find something to wear. This is my perception. Tell me if I'm wrong. And then he started getting upset about it. And then 
I got shitty and then he got shitty. And then I screamed. <laughs> I've never screamed, y'all. I've never oh. screamed to the point where like my voice was raw because it was escalating. And yeah. then I was getting, you know, shitty with her and then she's getting oh. shitty back with me. And then I'm like, well, da, da, da. well, I never said I wanted to go. And it just really snowballed. And what a like, small, stupid thing to get yeah. in a fight about. But this is why we don't effectively communicate as a whole. As, as but, a I, but I think there's like no way you could have like, of course you didn't. No, I could have said, Donnie. You could have. Yes. But at the same time, you're like, oh, I love Donnie. He's going to do it. You weren't thinking. So it's not like at the same time, you're wrong. Maybe he shouldn't have gotten his Nobody's right. Well, Nobody's wrong. And Nobody's I also right. should have said, you know, setting a clear boundary. I should have said, you know what? I don't want to go. Yep. And I should have felt firm enough to say, I don't want to go and I don't have to go. So, this, and if you get an attitude, that's on you. Right. But, but this instead, I was like... Both of us, right. Donnie and I, are people pleasers. So it really yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. It's a dangerous right. combo. Yeah. It's dangerous. It kills so, me. So, yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm right fucking down. so tired. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> but the beautiful Fuck. thing about it was, is that we were... <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I was like, fine, whatever. I'm going in the house. Well, you have to have a key to get in the door to get into the elevator because we were staying at like a, you know, a long term place doing the movie. And he texted me and he was like, I need the key to get in. And I was like, whatever. And so I have to go down. I go in the elevator, open up the elevator door. And he was like, and I'm like, and he's like, she goes, no, wait, before you say anything, I just want to say that I am so sorry. I'm like, me too. I don't want to fight like that again. <laughs> and he was like, I'm sorry too. And they were like, okay. And we were done. Wait, this is in the elevator. Yes. yes. Nobody else saw that? And no. by the time we got in the floor, I'm like, okay, so I kind of do want to go. I just was stressed yeah. I don't have anything to wear. And she's Fuck. like, I understand. And I really didn't want to go, but I thought it'd be fun. And I was like, okay, let's have a snack and get ready to go. <laughs> she's like, okay. Oh, Great. So clearly my. also it makes me think too back. It That was probably the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, but it was probably a bunch of other stuff. That sure. Yeah. But that's the growing edge, right? Like you have to go through that shit. Yes. In order for things to expand. Yeah. And for things to grow, right? Yeah. Nobody is in love all the time. Nobody is happy all the time. Mm-hmm. Nobody is uh, fully communicative all the time. Yeah. And shit falls apart. The question is, are you willing to put the, you know, the the work in to putting it back together? Well, I put my foot in my mouth all the fucking time. Sometimes on purpose. Y- y- you know what? It's like- you like the challenge of trying to remove it. <laughs> you know what it is? That I just say what's on my mind. I've just always been like well, that. I think it's always about intention. Like I've always framed it. When one of the first conversations we had was at, at a convention, we do these these comic conventions. I told I, I told Michael, he was like, Yeah, we're going to get drinks tonight. And I'm like, Oh, I quit drinking two years ago. And he just goes, Oh yeah, are you an alcoholic? And I was like, I uh, I don't know, maybe, probably. And and the way I describe that to someone is like, you have genuine curiosity about people. Mm. You exactly say what's on your mind but there is no judgment there there is no absolutely um, not. there's yeah. no cynicism and it's a beautiful thing it might you know ricochet once in a while and, yeah. and not work out but <laughs> yeah but it's it's a beautiful quality and I, I think i love that I, in well, you well thank you i i you know it's it can be good and I, I feel like with my friends i'm the one friend if you ask me something you got to be careful because oh, if everybody no. says, oh, no. what do you think? Honestly, I know I can trust you. I know you'll tell me. And I go, I think you're an idiot. Uh-oh. I think this guy hasn't called you in five days. He doesn't want it. He, he doesn't care. You're not a priority. How can you not see this? I'm, I'm tired of people sugarcoating and all her friends who I love going, oh, I don't know. Maybe he's just busy making her feel good, right? And then she'll say, oh, it's because he did go to this thing and he did go to this thing. And right, right. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm like, yeah, worry about it. <laughs> well, keep it moving. Like, yeah, he's not worth her time. Well, that's what I'm saying. I just say things like, oh, I was like, oh, my God, what do you think of my hair? Be honest. I go, I think it's way too dark. I think you, it washes you out and you look older. Okay. <laughs> Donnie. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. He wasn't talking about you, Donnie. Right, I know he was right. looking well, you at know. you. Donnie's bald, fresh press, I got Donnie fresh is press. bald. But anyway. Donnie you know. is bald. He is bald. He has a couple of bald men. You have a couple of bald men on the Nothing couch. Nothing wrong with that. By the way, guys, Donnie, you're, he's touching, Sullivan's touching your head. <laughs> feel free to, to uh, I, right, for, to, first I of all, feel, I should, that's a, that was a bad boundary right hey, there. Before we go into questions, I want to ask something because we haven't talked about this as us at all. No. We've talked, we know it's a small success story. We know it's just picked up for three more seasons. I mean, it's just like, I don't know anybody who doesn't watch it. I'm so tired of hearing people going, oh my God, I was so emotional. I go, it's always emotional. We know how great it is. We know how great you guys are. When you're on set though, you work together. You have, this is a different dynamic because you know, where they're living together, 
you're on set probably just as many hours sometimes. Oh, yeah. If not more working scenes together. So how do you, are there any things that you do that you're like in the beginning you had to figure out what pushes his buttons or her buttons and how do I like, they need this kind of support. I need to be there and do this a different way. I need to do this. I can't be, like I'm always goofy on set. So someone else who's like trying to focus Sometimes they're like, listen, I love you, dude, but you're like fucking uh, all over the place and that works for you, but I need to focus. So just can you, I'm like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. And then it's perfect. Well, let's, let's start with, you thought I hated you all of season one. Mostly in the pilot. In the pilot. Yes. During the shooting of I the said, pilot. Oh my God, he hates me. Oh, we have to kiss each other. Oh, great. Mm. Oh no. And why did you think that? I don't, talked about this. Yeah. I think it was just like. Maybe you were focusing. Maybe you're just sort of like your your resting face. Sometimes can be intense. Resting bitch face. Yeah. No. I have I have a I have a protruding lower jaw. My therapist has told me this. And so when you rest you, and your brow furrows, your jaw is already out, which is an aggressive stance. And so if you're not aware of that, it can you look mad. Yeah. And and you know my therapist was like, and you're six foot five, and if if you're six foot five and you look mad it makes people uncomfortable and you should just be aware of that. And it was extremely helpful actually. And to she like, didn't tell you that to laugh. But at the same time, here's the thing. I feel like I'm the new girl in school, you know, like I didn't have a list of credits and I'm like, Ugh. and I, you know, I'm always think that nobody likes me. I'm like, Oh, they don't. Anything. Yeah. <sighs> it's my own issues. And so I really tried to not, not to make them Chris's issues. Right. But so then when we was, got it, friendly, I was like, yeah. Oh, I didn't think you liked me. Yeah. I was in this, position of of being in a costume unlike anything i'd ever been in before i was hot all the time i was also nervous it was my first big tv pilot you know out i could not ever Um, chris is helping me with my lines by the way and as i'm processing uh, my lines and our scenes and all these things when i go in inside i look bored i look upset i look all these things when i'm really just processing but that's how it is wherever we go sure i think we've done a really good job and you can obviously speak for yourself but in in maintaining our professional boundaries in that we keep it positive we yeah. keep it uh focused yeah. we keep it um uh intentional mm -hmm. so there's not we don't sit around and gossip no. we don't sit around we're, like we're here to to create a loving relationship on and off camera and and it's not going to work on camera if we can't do it off no. yeah and i can tell like oh if he needs some time to himself or if i need time mm -hmm. i'll walk away mm -hmm. but we also you know there's levity in between takes and so we're always like you know joking and luckily we have some of most of the same sense of humor and like we love yeah. music and so yeah. we have a lot of commonality in that way I can do the same type of thing, you know, goofing around between takes and, and I don't know if that's ever, I don't know if that's ever gotten on. I to try to Never. be aware because obviously in our show, certain stuff is heavier than yeah, others, yeah. but, um, but yeah, I, I feel like we've, I feel like really quickly we talked about, you know, the only time that belongs to us is between action and cut. And in those moments, all we have is the two of us. We shouldn't care about anybody else. We shouldn't care about how long we take. We shouldn't care about how we look, how we sound. It's none of our business. Well, and you've been such a great teacher for me and, and friend. And I don't let me get emotional. Um, <laughs> get emotional. You know, because uh, Chris really, I mean, in the pilot, like we had some long, crazy hours. There was a lot of uncertainty. And then, of course, going into the, the show. And I'm like, I don't, I'm so afraid of my own shadow. Like, I don't know my lines. He's like, you do know your lines. You do. And like always there for me and always sort of supporting me and bolstering me. And I'm like, oh, I just love him so much. I just love you. So you know, I love you too. Chrissy, I got to say this. I don't know what it is. I, I thought this yesterday about the both of you, really. But I thought when you left, I go, I said it to Jessica, I want to hang out with them. Mm -hmm. I just like you both. Like I see like there's that people pleaser. You always want to make people happy. You just want everybody to have a good time. You want to not let anybody down. I think that comes from childhood. There's shit like there with me, yeah. especially. <laughs> I have to have approval. I want everybody to like me. And we know the reality. We know the truth is that it's impossible to make everybody happy. And you can't, you just, we can't as human beings do that. We just can't. It's an impossibility to think you can please everybody. You can't. And, I, and I'm learning that. And it's hard. It's easier said the writing's on the wall right there, but we know the truth. And so I get that. And I also understand the thing relationship you have with Chris where you thought, oh, does he like me? And I tell John Glover, who's my father in Smallville, I thought, 
oh my God, this two-time Tony Award winning actor who's worked with everybody, he doesn't like me at all. He's a and, serious man. And, and I, he looks like a serious man. And I confronted man. him years later, or like once the show got picked up, and I go, I just didn't think you liked me at all. He was like, oh, but why would you think that? And I go, I just, I just felt this presence, this like, he's like, I was so nervous. It's always the other person has, it's, it's, it's like, you know, in a way it's like, Rosamund, fuck off. Other people get nervous too. Other people get depressed or anxious. We're all fucking humans. And once we realize that it's not all about us. Yeah. So Chrissy, it's not about me. It's not about, it's about us. Yeah. This is us. No, he had to do it. Cut right. to the music. Fuck you. Let's take a question. Let's, let's get to the questions. We have a hotline, 323-207-5676. Call anytime. And uh, let's have a question for Chrissy and Donnie. Rosie and Sully, my question for Chrissy and Donnie is how in the world do you make friends as an adult and not just become a hermit? And how do you maintain and keep friendships? As someone in their mid-20s, that by far has been the most frustrating and hardest part of going into adulthood. Tony, that's a great question for you because I think you're reestablishing uh, friendships yes. and um, because we do spend so much time together. It's like, how do we? It's so funny. Yeah. Now that you say that. Yeah. You know, I guess putting myself in situations where I'm surrounded by people that have common interests for me, that's why recovery has been so significant. You know, I go to a plethora of 12 step fellowships and there I'm, I'm interacting with people that, you know, are sort of struggling or, or contending with a lot of the same issues that I am. And I love to dance. I love to, to do Zumba. So by going to classes, I'm automatically intermingling and, and having to sort of socialize with people that like the same things I like. And yeah. Um, yeah. And I think another thing too, is to like, I've really learned how to be like open-minded and, and try new things. And, but I think also it's, you know, you can be with like-minded people, but like you have to vibrate at the same frequency, mm -hmm. you know, and some people just don't, and it's not personal. If somebody doesn't want to be your friend or doesn't want to call you back and you just, you, you know, maybe they're not supposed to be your friend. Mm -hmm. And I think that we take it personally and we think, Oh gosh, I'm not, I'm not going to be a good enough friend, but you know, you want to be the friend that you exactly. want to be with. So, yeah. You know, in our business, we obviously have real friends who are, you know, whether they're celebrities or not. But like, I have, most of my friends are not celebrities. Yeah. You know, um, my new friends are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think for a long time, I was like, oh, I'm gonna hang out with this guy, and he's he's a big actor, and you know, I'm around him, and it's cool. And then I realized, who gives a fuck if you're not comfortable, truly yourself around a celebrity or not a celebrity, it doesn't matter. If you're not really comfortable and go, wow, there's something about this person that either inspires me or makes me a better person or I find funny or just cool to be around or authentic or trustworthy, I don't give a fuck who they are. Yeah. If you don't find that, then I'm not hanging out with that person. So Chris Sullivan, you're in a hit show, This Is Us, but you're so fucking genuine that I'm like, I can say anything, I can be myself. I don't feel like, oh, there's a guy on a hit show that I'm not on a hit show right now. Yeah. And it's not about that. It's all about finding people who make you a better person, who you really just enjoy genuinely being around and don't yeah. make you feel stressed. Yeah. Like I find myself stressed sometimes around people. I'm like, why? Because it's not I, right. It's not right. I was yeah. going to say the exact same thing as all of you. Don, Donnie, the, uh, if you're in your mid 20s, it's time to identify your passions. It's time to identify the things that you love, whether it's Zumba or Game of Thrones or kayaking or baking or whatever the thing is. And wherever you are, there is a group of people doing those things. And so if you if you identify your passions, it will it will lead you to your purpose. And if you obey your purpose above all else the cast of characters in your life will fall into place mm. if you're on the right path if you're not and you're staying home and, and you're not following your passions and, and looking for your purpose in this life then yeah you'll you'll kind of end up well you'll end up at some kind of either physical emotional spiritual rock bottom and mm -hmm. and then how do you recover the the life that you're meant to have um next question that one was good that was really good yeah what book movie or television show changed how you thought about love what book movie or television show don't say the notebooks all of them i won't do it i'll go with my second choice it's a weird one 
Uh, Hold on, let me get some nuts real quick. Yeah, once you get some crinkledy packaging. <laughs> Sorry, and I'm some all next time. I, I was trying to be quiet. Be all, be all crinkledy over there, <laughs> with, your, there. with your crunchy snack. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm ready. It was one of my favorite movies of two years ago, Arrival. You can see it. Oh. And it is a, you need to see it. We need to watch it on your on your big screen downstairs. Wait, who was in it? Um, Amy Adams. Amy Adams. And it is a oh, and it yeah. is a sci-fi. It's a sci-fi thriller, but it is an extreme metaphor for mm. omniscience, higher power, what it means to be in the moment, what it means to love the people who are in front of you for the very short time that they are in front of you, and kind of the value of. Uh, the present moment. It's 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 weird because it's couched in this amazing sci-fi. A- yeah. I mean, literally alien thriller, but it's this wonderful metaphor for all of those things, and it rocked me. I mean, I was bawling wow. at the end of this movie. Chris, that is the most beautiful response, and I wish I would have gone first, because um, <laughs> I was going to say an officer and a gentleman. Hey, but that for me was very nostalgic, in obviously being a Navy brat and the whole military sure. thing. But, but like, tell, so yeah, so why so why did you when that came out because that came out a, wh- a while ago? Yeah, yeah. And where 80s. were you at that stage that that connected with you? I think because you know obviously my my father was in the navy and my mother, but like I didn't see my father treat my mother the way I think I should have, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, this is so romantic that like you know he would go in and help her escape her her life and they could live their life together and it was really beautiful and romantic and you know whether it was real or not to me, I don't know. It was very romantic and I'm a hopeless romantic. So that's just something I think about like as a kid, that was super nostalgic for me that, but I, I don't have anything as profound as, as arrival. Yeah. I can't, I can't really, it, that's no, it's, 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 I don't, all of these things. I mean, I've had I, people who, who, because of where they are in their life, the Muppet movie changes the way they, yeah. they relate to other people. So it doesn't, it, what's that look? I just kind of made me smile in a weird smirky way. But you know that there, that it all depends on where we are. And if at nine years old, Kermit teaches you something yeah. about about how to treat other people. Why Actually, are have you guys seen so many songs about <laughs> rainbows? Um, no, but did you guys see Free Solo? Side? Yeah. Okay, that for me, that relationship. Actually, okay, this might be a little more profound. I um, love that. The relationship between his girlfriend that he had never, you know, he never mm-hmm. had a girlfriend before and mm-hmm. he was sort of potentially not in touch with his feelings very, very much. And for her to sacrifice the longing of wanting to be together for his dream and what he wanted, I was like, oh my goodness gracious. Like that to mm-hmm. me was so moving mm-hmm. um, that she could literally say, I might be saying goodbye to you forever. You could be dying yeah. today. Mm-hmm. That wrecked me. I mean, I granted I was on a plane, sure, and there was turbulence. Oh boy! But, <laughs> but they say that you're a little more emotional yeah. in altitude, so sure. I was just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm not usually, but I was a mess, and that for me um, was just so beautiful. Their relationship, yeah, yeah. I can't really think. Well, well, That's all right. Let's go to another question. You guys uh, answer great question. Next. Do you love yourself, Chr- Chrissy? <laughs> mostly. You mostly love mostly. yourself. Like if someone, that's an honest question. If you were taking a lie detector test, someone said, Chrissy Metz, are you happy? You'd say yes. Yeah. And it would come back positive. She was right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Donnie? Um, that's such a weird question. Am I happy? Do Sorry. I love myself? Is that the question? If somebody said, are you happy? It was, it, God was at asking this. You knew you couldn't lie. This is the question. Are you, are you happy? Uh, sometimes to most of the times. That's a that's a strong answer. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's a really weird question? You're looking at me like, well, that's what. Well, I mean, it's 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 it, happy oh. happiness. In my opinion, is a bullshit goal. Mm. Like, I, I agree with you. Like, I know we've talked about this. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And and if and if you're trying to be happy, you're gonna fail fifty percent of the time. No, but if someone at else, least. But all I'm saying is, no. right now in this moment, can you answer the question? Are you happy in this moment? I couldn't be happier. Mm. You know what just happened though? I was thinking about answering that question, mm-hmm. almost asking the question so I could hear myself say it. And then watching Chris, listening to him answer the question, he said something that just made me go, that's it. And what he said was, yes, in this moment, I am happy. So really it's profound, it's so simple. But it's so profound if you could just think about every moment, like what are you doing right now? Oh, I'm walking my dog. 
hey, a lot of people don't get to walk through the dark. This is a nice moment. I'm happy in this moment. If you could just take every moment by every moment, that's probably the way to maintain as much happiness and success in your life. People always say, you know, in bad moments, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. But that goes for everything. In good moments, this too shall pass. Yeah. And around and round we will go forever and ever because that balance exists. The good times will not always be, but neither will the bad times. And so to kind of not get attached to either, because I used to, when things were good, oh, great, this is yeah. going to be like this always. And then I was shocked right. when things got bad again. And then when things were bad, I'm like, well, it's going to be like this forever. And because I was in that mindset, the good times took longer to come back around mm. because I got attached to both of those things. I but just it, I just pulled a Chrissy. I think I'm teared up a little bit. Aww. I saw I that. I saw that. Your I got a little emotional there. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. You guys, thank you so much for um, for Thanks coming for here today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you. It's also great research us. because Donnie and I were talking about having our own podcast. So if we do, would you guys be our guest? Yes. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, we don't know what the hell we would do. but Well, just think about it. We're, yeah, we're going to think about that. Or just come on our show every week. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. <laughs> if you like uh, the podcast, please go to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, uh, at In Love Podcast. Remember the hotline, uh, 323-207-5676. Thanks to our guests. Chrissy and Donnie, uh, make sure you tune into This Is Us. I don't have to ask you that. You're probably already doing it, but do yourself a service. And what are your Instagram and Twitter handles, guys? Oh, mine's just my name, Chrissy Metz. Mm. Mine is at Donnie Berry. You know what? To take us out, this is uh, Joseph the Spouse. This is Chris Sullivan, his band. This is called Recovering. Of all the things, all these recovering shows behind the Once again, a huge thanks to our presenting sponsor, Smile Direct Club. For huge discounts, go to smiledirectclub.com slash podcast and use our offer code in love. My